All right, so today, um, first of all, I'm uh, Ryan Rossi. I'm the event supervisor for Science Olympiad. Um, I've been doing this pretty much all my life. It's it's fun. Uh, the biggest thing um, that we're going to talk about today, we're going to go through the rules and just kind of um, expectations of kind of what the events look like, uh, what that day looks like, and then kind of our coaches, parents, kids' expectations as well. Um, so first, um, is water bottle rockets. The job is to build a water bottle rocket. Um, the goal of the event is to um, create a rocket that lasts the longest in the air, right? The objective is pretty simple. Um, the cool thing about our event is how there's like a million different ways um, that you can do this, right? So we really, really encourage the kids to try many, many different things, right? So the rules are very, very, free as far as like what you are allowed to do because we really like to see what the kids come up with um every single year we see a lot of really 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 cool stuff um, so encourage your kids to think outside the box encourage your kids to um to try new things and experiment with it because uh this event it's a fun event right it's not a is for anatomy and these other super super hard study ones this is an event where uh, I'll be 100% honest with you guys. Some kids are more excited when their rocket goes straight up and comes straight down and breaks all over the cement than if it actually does good, right? So um, encourage your kids. Um, that's kind of the coach's role, right? Is every year we have some issues where the coaches are doing everything for the kids and the kids, when they come up to us uh, to launch a rocket, you, should, you know, we ask them questions. We, we see what their ideas were and um, the kids kind of don't have an idea of what's going on. So we really want to encourage let the kids be kids they'll come up with great things and um let them have fun with it because there is a lot of different ways um that you guys can do this a lot of different ways that the kids you know as we've seen rockets that have been three feet four feet high and we've seen rockets that are you know just a two liter bottle with a cone on top and both of them have been successful so really encourage your kids to try new things um and along those lines is like just your role is to facilitate their ideas, right? It's not to, it's to keep them on the right track and, you know, teach them about what they can do. Um, but it's also, it's not to take over and create a rocket overnight and give it to them and say, here, good luck. Um, it's to really help facilitate what the kids want to do. And that's our biggest emphasis um, because like I've, how often does kids get to create rockets that go you know, a couple hundred feet in the air and have a chance to stay there for a while or a chance to come straight down. So we really encourage the kids to um, kids to do the work and the coaches and parents to let the kids do the work. Um, so we'll talk about construction of the rocket. Um, you guys, the rules, if you don't have the rules right now, they are they're on the screen, but it also they are available on the Science Olympiad website. Um, and if you have ever any questions on the rules, you guys can reach out through email to uh, multiple people. I believe my email is on the website as well. And if you put in uh, a question into like the question box on the website, um, people do send me those as well. So uh, if you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and um, we'll help clarify them. And then also today, if you have any questions at all, um, I'm, I'll ask at the end any questions because usually um, at this coach's training, we um most of the time is spent answering questions, right? Clarifying things uh, because the rules are pretty self-explanatory on the on the sheet. So I don't want to not gonna read through every single one word for word. I'm gonna talk about the the ones that have been confusing over the years or the ones that we get most questions on. Um, but any questions you have, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, especially at the end, if you want, if you have a couple questions, you can stick around um, and we'll uh, we'll get those straightened out. So every year, um, a new bottle has to be made, and how we do that is we, you know, the the color of the the bottle has to change every year. This year, um, the rocket it has to be made from a green bottle. We don't make any exceptions on that because that is how we know that it is not from a previous year. So um, there's always been some question about why it has to be a certain color. That is why, so we can so we know um, that it was made this year, right? So please. That's a big one just because it's it tells us right away if we're, um, if we're on the right track. So on the bottle, on the green bottle, you have to have your school team number in the year uh, of the rocket with a permanent marker kind of along the same lines as so we see different rockets every year. Um, and we've been doing this a long time. It's never been never been an issue. 
Um, but we would like to have it. And then also there's times when rockets get lost, um, maybe on a roof, maybe in a tree. And um, at the events, there are people there that help us get those back if they do get lost somewhere. And we want to make sure that gets back to you. So please make sure the rockets are labeled with your school information on it uh, because it happens pretty much every year where a custodian, you know, in Macomb has to go up on the roof or um, the, the rocket flies across haze there in South Macomb and people got to go track it down. Um, and it's easy to get back to you that way. Um, big thing we've, this has happened in the past couple of years, the main two liter bottle, the bottle that holds the air and the water that cannot be altered um, in any way as far as like actually affecting the plastic of the bottle. You can add things to it like fins and parachutes and nose cones, but you can't like, Daddy. you can't like sand it down, right? You can't sand it down. You can't um, put a hole in it because then the air will not hold uh, when we pressurize it and then it won't be able to be launched. So that main two liter bottle, um, you cannot, you know, cut, you cannot do that stuff. You can add things to it, you know, liquid nails and glues and things like that, but you cannot make um, cuts or punctures or holes in it. Um, it won't be able to launch on launch day. And we've had a few of those over the past couple of years where I wanted to emphasize that today. Now, if you add more plastic bottles on top of plastic bottles um, to make the rocket taller, those can all be affected. Those can all be cut holes and you can do all sorts of things to those because it's not actually holding the water in the air. Um, but please make sure that that is that. Um, if you sand it down, a lot of times it will explode. And that's happened in the past couple of years where um, the integrity of that initial two liter bottle has to be there. Um, but you can add anything um, as far as like fins and stuff like that. Um, just no holes in that bottle. So you can add wings. You can add um, anything that you would like to that bottle. It just cannot be um, actually like you can't put something through the middle of the bottle. It won't hold the air. Um, you can, uh, items that are allowed. So we're on point number five there. Um, you can't like go out and buy a any anything is pretty much allowed. You just can't go out and buy. Um, commercially made rocket parts. So like you can't go to a store that sells model rockets and buy that and then put the parts of that on your rocket, right? You can't take a parachute out of a commercially made, you know, model rocket set and use that as your parachute, right? We want the kids to be able to make things and uh, all of that stuff. Um, and no metal is allowed on it. So if you, the only metal that's allowed are the little snap swivels um, in the parachute. So no metal, no glass, no sharp, um, no sharp things that are to a point uh, just for safety um, and things like that. So it's um, we we check them, we check all the rockets before uh, we launch them to make sure that they are safe to launch. And if there is ever a problem, we call uh, the coaches over and the kids get time to change it and adjust it. Um, but we want to make sure that we're not going out and buying rocket parts. We're not uh, adding glass and metal on top where. Yes, those things are aerodynamic, but also not safe to uh, to launch. Um, the t and this kind of goes with the same thing with point number six, the top of the rocket, whatever you guys have on top of the rocket, it has to be rounded to a point. Rounded, it can't be to a point. Um, so it has to be dulled a little bit um, just for, for safety because we have had, you know, we are shooting things up in the air and we've had some close calls over the years with kids and, and parents that are watching. Um, getting hit. We just want to make sure we're safe. Nobody's ever been hit, but uh, it's just one of those safety things. And uh, we've, we've broken cars before. We do some damage on some cars that are in the parking lot, but um, we want to make sure that, that we're being safe as well. Um, the bottom of the rocket is super important. How the rockets sit on our launchers, um, you can't have anything below um, below a certain point on the rocket. So that rule right there, uh, five centimeters, two inches or higher above the level of the bottle's opening. That is a one that we see a lot because it will not fit on our uh, launcher if we do not have if if the wings drop too low, it won't it will not fit on the launcher um, how it is constructed. So that would be another case where we would call over um, the uh, the coaches and the kids would have you know as much time as they needed to fix what they needed to fix. But those rules right there, um, the all those rules are there to ensure that their bottle, uh, the rocket is launchable, right? So what I mean by that is 
there's a lot of kind of freedom, right? Freedom for construction. So if it's not listed there in those, you know, first rules, it is allowed, right? It is allowed um, because we we love seeing the different designs every single year. So if it sounds like, oh, I'm really not giving you guys much to go off of, that's the point, right? I want, I want, um, we all want the kids to be creative, right? We want the kids to come up with a lot of cool things. So when you look at the rules, the basis is you have a two liter bottle, you can do whatever you want. There's no height restrictions. As long as it's green and as long as it is launchable with those rules and nothing sharp, you're good to go. Um, and that's what's cool about our event is that that's a very simple set of rules that the kids will have a ton of freedom in because if it is not listed there, it is allowed. Um, does anybody have any questions on the rules for building the rocket before we move on to um, what it's like on the competition day? If you do, you could just unmute yourself and ask, and I'll answer. Um, I had a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so are we building one rocket, or are we building two? So you can I build as many as you it. want. You can build okay. as many as you want. So if you, what we commonly encourage is if you have, um, you get two launches um, on the launch day. So definitely, I would recommend more than one, because if the first one breaks, you want to be able to have a second one. But what we see a lot, which we really encourage is, say you have a group of three or four kids. Um, what we really encourage is each kid comes up with a design for a rocket and then through your testing and through your experimentation type deal, um, the teams decide which two they're gonna launch on launch day. But you can launch the same rocket twice. You can bring five rockets and choose on that day. It is completely up to you. I would definitely recommend more than one because if it does get damaged or something goes wrong on the first launch, um, you have something that you can go to, but um, that is completely up to each team. So you get two launches, you get two launches on the day. It could be the same rocket twice. It could be two different rockets, but you get two launches, but it's completely up to, um, up to you. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, Ryan, a question on uh, tournament day, if something's not right, can the coach come in and help them fix the rocket? Uh, not on the tournament day. So what happens is if something goes wrong on, sorry about my dog barking, he's up, he's upstairs. Um, but if something goes wrong on the tournament day, what happens is we call the coaches over, we explain what the issue is, but the coaches cannot help the kids at all fix the rocket. Um, so what happens is we usually give them an area inside our competition um, off to the side and they can use their toolkit. They can use anything that they brought um, with them to the event to fix that rocket. Um, it was really cool uh, last year or the year before we had a rocket that was, um, they only had one rocket and it was extremely uh, damaged and they went over there and they sat um, off to the side for about an hour. They both had time, they had an hour. Um, and they fixed everything. They redid everything. The kids knew exactly what was going on. They launched the second one. I believe they uh, they meddled that day. Um, so coaches cannot help. They can hand them um, materials that they might have brought to the event. So if you bring extra things, that is all okay. But the coaches will not even be near um, near the the students when they are fixing the rocket. Um, so it's kind of on them. That's why we encourage. Uh, the kids to do it all because if the kids do it, they know what's going on and then they can go from there. Hi, I got, um, a, I got a question. Where do we pick up the materials? What are the materials that were? I'm sorry, this is Sam. This is the first time I'm doing this. Um, so I have no idea what is uh, what is really going on. Like, where do we get the materials? Where do we pick up? Yeah. Parts? Uh, what so for do we use? Yep, that's that's a very that's a pretty common question. So um, I'm glad that you asked because sometimes it comes up, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so all the materials that you need for the actual construction that is collected on your guys' own as a team. So if you have two liter bottles and you have things, you can go out and, and collect those things on your own because every school, every team is going to come up with different things. So um, whether it's going to the store to pick up uh, something that could be used as a nose cone, whether it's something laying around a garage, right? Um, that is up to each team uh, to collect those things. Now the actual launchers. Um, so with those, you should contact your school head coach 
uh, because a lot of schools have um, some type of launcher from the years past. Um, I would start there, and then if they do not, um, there are a ton of cheaper ones that are available um, all over the internet on Amazon, things like that. Um, and if you ever need any guidance on which ones work, you can reach out to email me, and I can um, I can help guide you in the right direction. And then the school will usually pay for it because that I would make them pay for it. I'm a teacher, and our school doesn't pay for enough, so I would start making them pay for some things. But um, yeah, so at, definitely reach out to your school head coach about um, any materials that they might have from years past, any materials, um, especially like a launcher or things that will allow you to practice. Um, and a lot of P P uh, schools in the past have had coaches who have just made their own launcher because all you need, like when I was a kid and I was in this event, when I was in you know fourth, fifth, sixth grade, um, we had a bicycle pump and we had a couple two by fours and a pin that we pulled a rope on. Um, that was That was what we used. So if you need any help finding a launcher, definitely reach out to your school head coach. They might have something. Um, and then if they don't, try to encourage them to buy one for not just this year, but for future years as well. Brian also uh, wanted to let everybody know that we'll do at least two open sessions sometime in March, if not uh, April, depending on the weather. And this is unpredictable because weather is all over the place at that time of the year. So we generally say here are the four dates we are targeting and a week before we'll send an email to let you know that this is when we are going to be here. Generally it's at uh, uh, Heritage Junior High, which is on 16 and Dodge Park. So you can come and build the rockets, modify the rockets, uh, launch as many as you want, no restrictions on that day. Uh, generally, I'm out there for at least two hours. If more people show up, I'll hang around longer. Yep, so there'll be those options as well. And then I, I know I do know a lot of schools have their own where they practice on their own as well. So um, again, lots of freedom. I know it could be frustrating at time to have too much freedom, but uh, that's with the materials, Coaches kind of collect them themselves. Kids can collect things. Uh, and then uh, with like a launcher thing, check with your school first. And then um, if you need to try to get one, you can always reach out with one that we would recommend. So we have any other questions on like the uh, construction of the rocket, things like that, before we move on to the conversation? Yeah, there, there's one, uh, I think it was rule uh, four or five, rule five that mentions no specific prohib prohibition on use of glues yeah um does that include hot glue yeah I'm just you can use it okay all right i wasn't sure if that would impact yeah. the bottles okay no it used to it, we used to outlaw it um because it could impact the bottle and mm -hmm. we've just over the years we've tested it and we've just found that unless you hold the hot glue like on it for an extremely long time and actually okay. try to melt down the bottle that you're not going to, it's not going to affect anything. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Thank you. So, we, so we've, we've, we've changed that rule over the years just because we found that it doesn't, it has very minimal impact. Okay. Yep. All right, so we'll move on to the competition part. So um, the competition, it kind of it hits on some of the stuff we've talked about already, um, but each school gets two launches uh, on the launch day. So how it works is when you enter the area to launch, we will have somebody, and this is definitely for like the, uh, the South Macomb, but we do it um, as well as all the other ones, right? So from all the competitions that we have, we'll be doing the same thing so the kids get used to it. Um, but at the South Macomb, for example, that's the that's the big one that I like to highlight just because it's um, we really, again, our focus is the kids. So what happens is the coaches come up with the kids. Um, the first step is they will check in with their rocket and we have somebody sitting at a table um, and we just kind of go through a checklist with the kids and we ask questions about the rocket um, where, you know, we go through things, making sure it's not sharp, making sure all those construction rules are followed. Um, and also we ask the kids to pack and unpack their parachutes on their own because we want to make sure that they are doing it. So um, that's part of it, right, is that procedure part where the kids know what to do with the rocket as well. Um, at that point, after 
the kids check in, coaches go to a different area, right? They're asked to go uh, stand behind a fence where they are not allowed to talk to the kids at all. And that is probably the thing that we are the most strict on that day because it is about the kids. Like we've, I think I've emphasized that a little bit. Every year we have issues um, with parents and coaches, you know, coaching the kids from the side, um, you know, that's not allowed in any of the other events in, in science Olympiad, especially like the study ones, right? You guys get a ton of influence on what the kids can come up with. Just make sure you let them have their, their day and, and teach them, right? We want them to know, like learn from you guys, facilitate what they want to do. So that day, there's no coaching at all from the coaches. Like when you walk up, it's time for them to go and they're uh, they're ready to go. If there is a construction violation, we'll call the coaches over like we've talked about and we'll explain what it is. And the kids will go to a separate area inside our um, area and they will have as much time as they would want to fix it. Um, now, some things, if they are unfixable, like if we bring one bottle with with like a hole in it, you know, there's not much that we can do about that, right? But anything that you bring to the event, you can use. So over the years, we've had teams that bring, you know, spare nose cones, that bring spare wings, that bring duct tape and bring scissors and things for the kids uh, to use, which I strongly recommend um, if, if strongly recommend bringing extra materials, especially materials to fix something that could be broken. Um, so scissors, you know, last year we had a kid with a, that, you know, I, it was, it was funny because we were, we were kind of like, he brought out a full box cutter and we weren't really confident in him using it. So we had, you know, I helped him, I supervised him and I showed him how to use it. And he made some really nice changes to the rocket and he was able to launch it. And um, we, uh, we helped teach him how to use a tool that day that he, you know, it was definitely not used before. So you can definitely um, bring on the materials to do that stuff um, and make the changes that are needed. Um, after that, the kids, so if everything checks out at the, at the, uh, check-in, the kids will go fill up their bottles with, uh, with rock, with, uh, with water. So they'll go over to an area with a couple buckets. Um, we provide all of the water. We provide all of the funnels. We provide all of the, um, measuring, measuring cups, measuring instruments, right? We provide all of that. That is the same for everybody. Um, if you have your own, you're, of course, welcome to bring it because it's just a measuring cup, right? Um, but you're welcome to bring it. But we have we have all that materials for the kids. We have all that materials for the kids that everybody's able to use. Um, so they'll go fill up their rocket. And after that, uh, they get two launches. And we have two launchers set up on the at the South Macomb, um, the, that, the, the big event, right? We have two launchers. And each team will launch once on each launcher. So it's not like you're going two times on that one, two times on a different one. You're going to launch with one on each. Uh, and then, uh, so when they go up from there, they have the rocket with the water. Uh, we pressurize it to 75 PSI and uh, we just give a three, two, one, go. And that's pretty much it. We time it. So what we do is we take the average. We have multiple timers out there and we, um, which are our timers are great every single year. We have so many similar times down to like, you know, the milliseconds. It's, it's, it's great to see. And um, the, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, once you get up there, it's, it's hitting a button and going. So 99% of the work for this event happens in the, in the practicing construction and building and trial and error and figuring out, you know, how much water to put in it, figuring out how, how tall your rocket has to be, figuring out how, um, how much weight your rocket has to be. It's it's pretty much it. So scoring for it, what uh, happens after the launches, we time it um, and we write down on their check-in sheet that they carry with them, you know, how long it was in the air. But the other thing that we look for is um, the big one is if your rocket breaks apart at all. So say press the launch button and a wing flies off, the time stops right when the wing falls off, it hits the ground. And then, um, it goes into a, it go, the rocket will go into like the bottom bracket because it, it did not stay together. So any rocket that goes up and say, say a rocket goes up and it is up there for two seconds, right? And say another rocket is up there for, it goes off and a wing falls off and, it's up, and the wing doesn't hit for 15 seconds. That two second rocket will be, above the 15 second rocket in the standings because it did not stay together so we emphasize those constructions like build it solid build it soundly um 
in that. And then um, the last two points under the scoring, uh, teams whose rocket cannot be launched for any reason will receive participation points. Um, so we won't get a score for a time, but they'll receive participation points for the um, for the total school scoring. And then the longest time aloft wins. So the ties will be broken by the teams. A uh, lesser flight time teams with two flights will win ties over teams with only one flight. We have never had a tie because we go down to, um, you know, if if we we go down to, I don't even know, I'm not. I teach social studies. Matt was the hundredth. Yeah, the hundredth. So it's uh, it's like. We'll have numbers that are down to like 7.21, you know, seconds. Um, so it's very rare that we get a tie. I think we've had one tie for like a, a lower place. Um, like it was, it was not a not a metal uh, place, but it was. We had one tie, I think, over the I've been doing this 15 years, and we've had one tie. So that is pretty much it as far as what it goes on the day of the competition. You'll have a flight time, a launch time. And, uh, you know, talk to us, too. Like, if you have a scheduling conflict, you come talk to us during the day and we can figure out a way to work with it. Because, again, this is a fun event for the kids. So we've had people that have come, you know, early who have said, hey, we're going to be 10 minutes late. And is that OK? And because they're running from across the whole campus to get from one place to the other. And we're, we're pretty we want to work with the kids to be able to do that. Right. Um, so that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions on. You know, the competition scoring any of that you can unmute and ask or put it in the chat and Manish will let me know because I can't see the, the chat. I, uh, this is Rob I had a quick question I heard 75 PSI uh, but yep. the, the volume of water is a variable that we can play with right. Yep that's that's pretty much like that's the, to me that's the science behind it right so when you are testing your rocket when you are building your rocket there's going to be you know, you're thinking about weight, you're thinking about the water weight, you're thinking about how that mixes in and how big and how tall your rocket is, how much it weighs. Like there is going to be a point where you figure out that too much water isn't going to go very high and not enough water is going to go, not going to go very high either. So you have to, that's what the trial and error, the experimentation is for the kids is figuring out, you know, the weight distribution and, and how much water it's going to take to make it go high pretty much. So yeah, you get full control over that full control over that. So um, like a lot of teams, when they test, they mark it on their bottle where they want to fill the water up to. Um, so they know when they have to go to launch, they, they've they experimented enough and they know their lines, right? They know how much water to put in. Just so that everybody who joined a little bit later, uh, if you go to the Macomb Assault web page, there is a video training that was done a few years back, and there is a PowerPoint presentation uh, on that web page, and those presentations tell you a little bit more about different options uh, of the rocket launchers and stuff. And like I said, we'll do open session sometime in March, April, right before the tournament, at least two. If needed, we can do more, but at least two sessions where you can come with all your supplies and test rockets as many times as you want, make modifications, you know, large parachute, small parachute, tall rocket, short rocket, whatever you want to do, but you got to come prepared if because those are only a couple chances that you get. Mm -hmm. And then there's also videos all over, you know, all over the internet, right? So if you are, if you're brand new to this and you are trying to guide your kids in the right direction, right, you can find a ton of information out there. Um, and then it's up to like, but again, I just want to emphasize one last time. It's about the kids, right? Your job is to facilitate them. They can come up with the craziest idea and you might think it's, there's no way in heck that this is going to work. Um, it might not, right? But like help facilitate the kids ideas right that's what this is about now if it's a terrible idea and you're like there's no way that this could even launch that's when you step in and say hey i don't think this is the best way to do this why don't why don't you guys consider different options? like your job is to facilitate their ideas right so it's we've had you know it's happened in the past where parents have gone and and we can tell like we've been doing this a long time where parents have gone built a whole rocket for the kids that here go launch and then the parents are the ones celebrating over on the side and the kids are like oh that's cool but i'll be honest like i said before 
kids even like it when the rocket goes up and comes down and smashes into the cement and explodes everywhere or it gets stuck in the grass, you know, six inches down in the grass, right? So let your kids be kids. They'll come up with great ideas and then help facilitate their ideas. Any other questions about anything really at this point? Anything for the good of the cause, Manish? Nope, I'm... I'm good, unless anybody else has questions. Yeah. Well, all right, if you don't have any questions, you are, you're, you're free to go. Not, and um, if you need anything at all, my email um, is on the website as well, and you can reach out uh, in that way. Um, and hey, I'm, if, I'm sorry, I got that. Uh, sorry, one more. Um, so you guys are talking about a tournament in the April timeframe, but I, uh, when I went to the initial meeting that, was held at uh, for Ojibwa Elementary. I had the understanding that it was uh, that there was a, a the tournament was on or about two March. Is that accurate or that's something? So there's else? over. There is two tournaments for everybody, right? So main tournament is in May, and then everybody else has individual tournament within their school district. So like Utica will have their own. Land Cruz will have their own. Uh, South Macomb, which is, you know, a bunch of schools together, they will have their own. And as I mentioned before, all of that is listed on the website. So that's more like a dry run, right? So this is those early tournaments, the district tournaments, the school district tournaments are meant for getting kids used to taking tests because at this level, kids don't use Scantron. Some of the events use Scantron. They have to, some of the events are station based. So they have to go around the station. So the purpose of this tournament is not to throw kids straight into the tournament where they are completely lost. This is more like a practice tournament. So that will be in March. And depending on your school district, it will be a different date. So if you go to the if you go to the main website macobaso.org, cover on the elementary, right? Here is Chippewa Valley. If I click on it, it will take me there. So if you are a part of that group, you will go there. If you are Lance Cruz, you will go there. If you are Utica, you will go there. And then South Macomb, you will go there. So here is South Macomb. South Macomb is on March 9th. Got it. Thank you Am very I much. Am making sense? Now I'll yep. go to Chippewa Valley just so that you know that one is on March 2. Yep, and I also want to um, emphasize one thing because it did become an issue last year. Um, those, ev those events are tournaments, right? There is we had a couple parent issues last year where, you know, I got screamed at for about a half hour straight by a parent because we told the parent that they were not allowed to coach. He said, this is, this is a practice event. It is not a practice event. They are real tournaments where we, we run it with the same expectation as anywhere else. Right. So I would prefer not to get yelled at this year for, for those are real tournaments. Right. So when they walk up, we're going to do the same exact things that we do at the one in May where it's everybody. Um, that we do at those because those are, you know, they're real tournaments. Um, and I want to emphasize that because it did become an issue last year where, um, yeah. you know, people had to be asked not to come back, right, because of because of how they were acting when they assumed it was a practice tournament. It is not a practice tournament. There are awards given out at those, and we um, we treat it just like we treat the ones in May. I kind of had a, a random question. Our school has a like homemade launcher that they give us to use. No one knows how to use it. Is there a way to get you a photo of it? Maybe maybe you might be able to point me in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. I can give it give it. A, I can give it a try if you uh, if you can email me a photo. My email is on okay. the uh, the website, but as well also too like 
Um, if you find, uh, you know, try YouTube, you'll be surprised how many similar things are out there as well um, that may have the same yeah. things. So um, I could definitely try. I don't know how helpful I'll be off of a picture, um, but we can definitely try to figure that out. Yeah, it looks like the one that's like on here that's the learn how to build one with the pipes and like the wooden and just I'm not sure how to use it. And the team from last year never figured out how to use it. For and sure. Yeah, yeah send us send it. <laughs> yeah, you can send us a picture and we'll do our best. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I have a couple of questions. Um, do you know if there's any kind of resource, um, like, or video or a book, like, just to kind of explain to the kids how this works and, you know, like, what the different parts are for, um, just so that, you know, they have some kind of background in that before they start designing? Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Manish, I think, uh, had shared it on the screen record there, but on our website, there are multiple videos um, as well as PowerPoints from years previously um, that have been given out to the kids that we kind of just leave as resources for, for our coaches. So, like, yeah, this screen right here, you can see that there's a workshop from 2016. Uh, there's, um, I think there's a, a video of the actual event itself about kids launching their rockets. Um, and then there's, um, you know, supervisor things from 2010. So there's a there's a ton of stuff right on our website that will kind of walk through um, exactly what it's going to be like. So instead of, you know, for the kids to see themselves, instead of you guys relaying to the kids as well. And that will help them. So all that right. information, all that information is right there on our website. Yeah, is there also like kind of some safety tips as well? Because like I know, you know, if you're making a parachute and you have to use an exacto knife or, you know, those kinds of things, you know, Obviously, you know, we're chaperoning. At what point do we step in and, you know, or do we yeah. let them try to do those things? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would just teach them, like, it's a great opportunity, you know, to teach the kids the safety rules of tools, right? Like, um, whatever you're comfortable with as a coach. Uh, I know, like, last year we had a, I had a student who was, um, he was trying to fix his rocket with an X-Acto knife at the event. And I was not comfortable with it. So I, I went over myself and I had taught him how to use it and taught, you know, taught, supervised him and also gave safety tips. Like if his hand started going or if he was cutting near his hand, you know, I, I, I was teaching him how to do it. So we were 100 percent safe um, with that. So really, whatever you're comfortable with, there's nothing wrong with using a tool that you don't want kids to use and you teaching them how to do it, but then doing it yourself. Right. If it's not something that they have to use to fix something later on. Um, okay. But yeah, it's a great opportunity to teach the kids, um, you know, safety with tools because some kids are going to love the hands on aspect of it and they're going to they're going to want to use the tools and they're going to want to learn how to use the tools. And that's part of this event as well, too, is being able to learn about that stuff as well. About how quickly do you think that we should be at the point where we should be practicing launches and things, you know, from the design to the, the launch part? I mean, I know that it says not till um you know march or whatever that we would have our first event but obviously there's a lot of trial and error involved in that we'll be meeting like once a week so i don't know you know at what point we should have launched in the air by <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's all about from each team to kind of figure out um i would say you know it's it's never too early to start because the more you practice the more opportunity uh, that you have to get it right so i know like when i was a uh, elementary kid uh you know i we, we started in the winter time. I remember being in the gym and we were cutting out parachutes and dropping things from ladders just to figure out what we liked and things like that before the weather even turned. Um, but it's up to each school, right? So uh, I would talk to your head coach about that and kind of what their timeline is for starting. But it's never too, I would say, like there's things that you could do inside without launching as well that can uh, help you figure out what works and what doesn't uh, before the weather kind of turns around. Because you won't be able to launch when it's sub, you know, sub 30 degrees. Right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. By the way, uh, you generally should avoid, in my view, exacto knives and stuff as much as you can. You can use those uh, surgical scissors. They are a little bit bent and the tips are blunt. And you can pretty much do anything you need to do with those. So when yeah. I had my kids in elementary uh, and I used to coach, that's what I used to use not exacto knives. Okay. I would agree. I would agree. Any, any time you could be more safe. 
um, and just also encourage kids to to um, teach them how to use them, right? Teach them how to use those materials and, and teach them behind that because this is a this is a cool event, and there's a lot of tools out there that kids um, can use safely, and there's a lot of tools out there that where adults might want to, you know, definitely supervise or use themselves to help them, right? That's that's your job. To me, when I say facilitate the design, if a kid needs if you don't want a kid using an exacto knife to cut a cut a wing, that's helping facilitate their design. If you are doing that part with the exacto knife, right? Like to me, there's nothing wrong with that because you are you are showing the kid how to do it, and it's just a safety thing, 100% fine, right? We just don't want parents going in the garage, you know, three weeks before the tournament starts, and the kids never picked up a pair of scissors or never even drew a design, and they show up with a really complicated design, and and the kids are like, oh, that's cool. And then the parents are over there celebrating, right? So to me, facilitating would be helping them with that stuff too. I see Christina Walker has a question, hand up. Sorry, I already asked, thank you. Okay. All right. Anything else for the, for the good of the cause? Well, all right, and uh, if there was anything that um, you have any questions about, don't hesitate to reach out. I know this uh, this has been recorded, so if um, if you want to go back and look at it, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out and have fun with the kids, right? So thanks all for coming, and hopefully we're excited for a good year.